Hello, in this video we're going to go over problem A4 from 1992 Putnam. The problem is asking us to find kth derivatives of a function at zero where some relation for the function is given. So we are given that f is infinitely differentiable and f of 1 over n is equal to n squared over n squared plus 1. When I looked at this problem, the first thing that came to my mind is, can I find a function that satisfies this property? And it's not very difficult to see that if you write down the right-hand side um, as 1 over 1 plus 1 over n squared, clearly there is some function that satisfies this equality. And that function is f of x equals 1 over 1 plus x squared. Okay, so that makes sense. So now let me take this function and subtract from the original function and I get a new function then that new function which I call it g of x that new function satisfies g of 1 over n is equal to 0 now I want to find all the derivatives of this g because if I find all the derivatives of g that's the same thing as finding all derivatives of f so how do we find derivatives of g first of all g of 0 that would be like basically that the zeroth derivative is the limit because g is continuous it would be the limit of g of 1 over n and g of 1 over n is 0 so that means g of 0 is 0 now I want to find out what is g prime of 0 so if you write down the definition of g prime you get g of x minus g of 0 over x as x approaches 0 now what I know is g of 0. I know g of 0 is 0. So I need to find the limit of g of x over x as x approaches 0. I don't have all the values of g of x because I'm not given the function g of x. However, I am given g of 1 over n. g of 1 over n is 0. So that means if I look at g of 1 over n over 1 over n, that's 0. And these two tell us that g prime of 0 must be 0. Okay, now if you want to find the second derivative of g at 0, you need to find the limit g prime of x minus g prime of 0 over x. Of course, g prime of 0 is 0 as we just discussed, so we can ignore this part. But we don't know g prime of x again. Do I know g prime of 1 over n? Unfortunately, I don't know g prime of 1 over n. But I don't really need g prime of 1 over n. I only need g prime of a sequence that converges to zero. Can I find g prime of a sequence that converges to zero? Well, yes. If I look at g, g of one, I know that's zero. I know g of one half is also zero. So between these two, I can find some point, some c that g prime is zero by Rolle's theorem. And then applying that repeatedly, I can find a sequence between the terms of the previous sequence which would be 1 over n so I can, I can find something here and something here and so on and that means this would also be 0 okay so it looks like I can use this idea to solve the problem now let us write down a solution okay so first define g from r to r by g of x equals f of x minus 1 over 1 plus x squared. Okay, by assumption, g of 1 over n is going to be f of 1 over n minus 1 over 1 plus 1 over n squared, which is 0. And then since 1 over 1 plus x squared is infinitely differentiable, c infinity, so is g. We are given that f is uh, infinitely differentiable, and we know that 1 over 1 plus x squared is infinitely differentiable, therefore g is infinitely differentiable. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create that sequence. So by induction, we will show there is a sequence x1, x2, etc. such that 
and this sequence is decreasing all of them greater than zero such that xk approaches zero and gn of xk is equal to zero okay and this is for all n so maybe i'll have to put the n at the beginning So by induction on n, um, we will show for every integer n, for every positive integer n, there is a sequence that converges to 0 and its uh, nth derivative of g at, the, at those points is 0. How do we do that? We are going to do that by induction. So the first step would be for n equals 0, we have g of 1 equals g of 1 over 2 equals g of 1 over 3, etc. And that's all equal to 0. That's given. This is given. And we actually found that here. So this is, I guess I'm going to call that star. By star. So now assume gn of xk is 0 for k equals 1, 2, etc. And where x1, x2 is a decreasing sequence converges to 0. So now use the Rose lemma, Rose theorem. By the Rose theorem, there is some yk between xk and xk plus 1 such that gn plus 1 of yk is 0. Now since yk is between xk and xk plus 1 and xk converges to 0, yk also converges to 0 and yk is strictly decreasing okay so this completes the proof by induction so this completes the proof by induction now we are going to apply the continuity of gn now gn of 0 is going to be the limit as uh, k approaches infinity of gn of xk. gn of xk is 0, so this is the limit as k approaches infinity of 0, which is 0. So therefore, for every natural number n, gn of 0 is equal to 0. Now, we're going to have to relate that to the derivative of f. So what we have is this, um, fn of 0 minus the nth derivative of 1 over 1 plus x squared at x equals 0 is equal to 0. If you look at this uh, 1 over 1 plus x squared, we can find its nth derivative by looking at its power series. The Taylor series for this one is, since it's a geometric uh, sum, we can write it down as the sum negative x squared to the power of k, k equals 0 to infinity. So that tells us, and this is for every x between negative 1 to 1. So that tells us the nth derivative of this, uh, this uh, function, 1 over 1 plus x squared, at x equals 0, is equal to, it is 0, if n is odd, because the coefficients, which are negative 1 to the power of k, are the nth derivative divided by n factorial. So the nth derivative would be the coefficient, so it would be negative 1 to the power of n over 2, times n factorial, if 2 divides n. Okay, so the nth derivative would be this, which means, therefore, nth derivative of f 
at 0 is going to be 0 if 2 doesn't divide n and it would be negative 1 to the power of n over 2 times n factorial if 2 divides n. And this brings me to the end of this video. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to, ch to the channel where you can find uh, other videos like this. My focus is on math competitions, preparation for math competitions, whether they are college math competitions like Putnam competition or high school math competitions. I will see you in another video.